Hello everyone, uh, welcome again to MedTube channel. Uh, my name is uh, Wael Zanjir. Uh, today's topic is about acute kidney injury. Uh, this is just a little video um, at the beginning um, to show the animation channel of my brother Abdurrahman. Uh, it's a really nice channel. Um, it would be great to uh, have a quick look at it and uh, show uh, support. And perfect, let's move on. Definition of acute kidney injury, essentially it means um, increase in the serum creatinine of at least 27 micromoles per liter within 48 hours or uh, urine output of less than uh, 0.5 mLs per kilogram per hour for more than six hours. Um, so that's approximately 35 mLs per hour for a 70 kilograms male. This definition is according to the Kidaigo, which was published in 2012. There are a uh, few other definitions, um, but the most commonly one we use in practice, um, uh, at least in Canada, is the Kadaigo. Acute kidney injury can be uh, anuric, less than 50 mLs per day, or oliguric, 50 to 500, or non-oliguric, which is more than 500 per day. Um, all have an, an um, inadequate clearance, of course, with low GFR. Um, however, data does show that prognosis of the non-oliguric AKI is, in general, better than the oliguric uh, or the anuric uh, AKI. So when a patient has AKI but they're still producing a good amount of urine, that's a good prognostic sign that they will do better uh, in general. Uh, the most common etiologies of AKI are um, acute tubular necrosis, um, mostly caused by hypotension and sepsis and prerenal disease. Both of these etiologies essentially have mismatch between the oxygen and uterine delivery and the, the cellular demand of the nephrons. The increase in creatinine could be blunted by the dilution, um, by the intravascular dilution due to a larger, larger volume of distribution. So essentially, if you give IV fluids, you may have inc uh, improvement in the creatinine or flattening. Um, which could be in part from the improvement in renal function, but it could also be due to the dilution uh, of the creatinine. The EGFR cannot be estimated accurately in acute kidney injury uh, because it's dynamically changing um, as the disease is progressing. It's not the same as a steady state disease uh, or, or a patient in a steady state, um, whether it's CKD or a normal person, because at that state, you could um, estimate the GFR by different um, formulas that are available, um, such as the CKD-AP um, or the MDRD. However, when the patient is in AKI, that, that is not the case. There is a formula called um, kinetic GFR. Um, however, it, does overestimate, uh, it could overestimate the uh, GFR, again, for the reason mentioned, because it it's constantly changes. Several studies have shown that AKI is associated with worse short and long-term adverse outcomes, especially in the ICU setting, where mortality rate can be very high, more than 50% in those um, receiving uh, renal replacement therapy uh, because of AKI. The stages of AKI, so again, it depends on the staging system you look at. The most commonly one we use is the Kadaigo, um, stages one, two, and three. Uh, stage one, um, is increasing serum creatinine 1.5 to almost uh, two times uh, the baseline um, or increase more than 27, uh, 27 micromoles per liter or the urine output less than 0.5 ml per kilogram per hour. You can use the urine output criteria in the uh, ICE critical care setting where it's e easily measured. Otherwise, the easier one would be to follow just the creatinine. Um, and then if it's more than... Uh, two to three times baseline approximately, that's stage two, and then page, stage three is uh, more severe. Going to the etiologies, um, AKI could be classified um, in terms of etiologies, as uh, most people know, into pre-renal, intrinsic, or intrarenal, and post-renal. With intrarenal being intrinsic renal vascular disease, intrinsic glomerular disease, and then intrinsic tubular and testicial disease. The uh, again, the most common ones we will be seeing in clinical practice are the pre-renal and the ischemic ATN, which is in this category here. Um, I think we'll stop here. Uh, we're going to have future videos to discuss each category by itself. 
uh, to be more thorough and to speak of the pathophysiologies and the classification within each uh, category. And after that, we'll speak about the approach, uh, the clinical approach to AKI and the management of AKI, um, all the way from history taking, physical exam, uh, the blood laboratory tests and their relevant interpretation, and then uh, towards uh, management in general. Um, thank you very much, and I'll see you in our uh, next video on pre-renal disease. Thank you.